Uh, well, thank you very much for coming today. I know it's nearly the end of the day and everyone's very, very tired, but um, w I was very surprised that my talk about how WordPress would save the media was actually selected, so I come here on a bit of a back foot, but I'm absolutely delighted to be involved with the WordPress community and I hope to do more in the future as well. Um, my name's Una Murphy and this is Brian Peelan and together with quite a few decades experience of journalism in the mainstream media in broadcasting. I've worked for BBC, UTV, RTE over the years, uh, producing news, current affairs, documentaries. And um, Bran uh, came to View Digital as a production journalist, also as a feature writer. And um, together we've combined to work on a digital first product which goes out in the form of a magazine, a digital magazine, and stories about social affairs and community issues. Uh, which are now on a, a, the, the WordPress website. Um, so I'll let Brian say a little bit more about his background, if he likes, to join well, the party. Well, <laughs> well, um, well, I left school about 16. I didn't know what I wanted to be. I'm still kind of figuring it out. But I did become a journalist eventually. Um, I worked for a number of newspapers and magazines here in London, Wales, Dublin, Cork. Go back here about five years ago to work at the Belfast Telegraph, but I kind of had enough of newsrooms, worked in newsrooms. I know the digital thing was taking place then, and for a lot of people who have, who have, who have embraced that and moved in, a lot of people of my generation were terrified by it and decided they were going to ease themselves out of that world, where I thought the world of actually publishing, with it comes a lot of great responsibility and pressure, but the concept of publishing the actual control of the, the levers of publishing and publishing your information to an audience with all the checks and balances of journalism and responsibility was something that I just couldn't resist. I'm still learning from doing it, but I absolutely love it. And WordPress gave us the vehicle to do it, without a doubt. So currently we're a member of a new UK steering body which is called the Independent Community News Network and it's basically the impetus came from Cardiff University in Wales where I studied for a master's over 20 years ago and I had the opportunity to go back to my old journalism school and to be part of a new exciting genre which is community journalism. We're not Rupert Murdoch, we don't have loads of money in our pockets but we are part of the community as everyone else is and we want to do journalism for the benefit of our community. So just now we've been selected to be part of the BBC Local News Partnership and that means we receive stories that we can't get to ourselves, local councils, stories in, in Derry, health and education boards throughout Northern Ireland. And it means that we have more content to put on our news site. So we're a social enterprise. We've gone along the non-profit mar 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 uh, model because, as I say, we're not Rupert Murdoch and uh, the type of journalism that we do, I think, works in the sort of community social enterprise type of milieu. Um, so if you wanted to have a look at our website, it's a, uh, it's, it's a WordPress website where we keep our magazines primarily. So as I say, we're digital first. That's our most edish, recent edition where we looked at maternal mental health. We were scandalized to find that there's not one specialist mother and baby unit on the whole of the island of Ireland if a mother experiences psychiatric um, problems during pregnancy or after the birth. So we thought that would be very good to work with a campaigner in the local community to, to highlight that issue. Yeah. Just on that, we went through a number of versions and on how to host a magazine. One of them was UD. People who may be familiar with UD, why do you use? Had problems at one time over a weekend, nearly lost the whole issue. And uh, it was a nightmare. I found that during the week we were fine, but it was very difficult to get support at the weekend. So I just said, that's it. I couldn't do that again. Did I just can't miss a deadline. I'd shoot myself for a miss a deadline. So it's kind of, it's what the world I grew up in. So we, we then went to issue. And uh, yeah, here it is here. So basically, um, the magazine is published. It's going to come up now. Oh yeah, okay. I'm bigger and bigger. Okay, so it's all mine, basically. Now the thing that we're still working on the model is what you see printed is kind of what you see online. But we're, it's to do with resources. We have a big audience for that now. We built it up from naught when we first started off this magazine. I remember the 21st issue we decided to yeah, make it a themed magazine before we had a range of stories. So now we do a magazine about a single theme 
I never read that magazine, it's about that thing. I'm not, I put it in pages. You can see that there are, and then there's links obviously in the stories that will take you to the other stories. So that, that's the magazine there, and, and that's, I'd say, about them in the terms of mental health. So we also print the magazine and distribute it round free to all the libraries in Northern Ireland and increasingly into the Republic of Ireland, Dublin City Library, all their periodical uh, section will have copies. If you go to the ILEC Centre in Dublin, you'll see it in their business section, um, Trinity College, National Library of Ireland, as well as all the libraries in Northern Ireland take a free printed copy because we still believe in libraries <laughs> as a great open source for information, as well as WordPress. Uh, um, so we're very passionate about the idea of overcoming the demographic deficit when it comes to media, because we believe that the means of production are in everyone's pocket nowadays when it comes to content. And we as professional journalists want to connect to the community we live in to produce really interesting journalism that counts. So basically, we're part of a whole swathe of people doing this across the UK and Ireland. Um, Bristol Cable, The Ferret in Scotland, there are all other examples of similar community media organisations who are also part of the independent community news network. And that's just a few of our front covers. So we cover tough issues from prisons to justice to child poverty, suicide, uh, we're, we're, we really felt passionately as journalists that the social affairs are not well covered in this community, which is, you know, we'll spend a lot of our time talking about politicians who are not in Stormont, and we thought that we need to get back to the community and talk about some of the, st the, the stories that count, and some of the people who are really campaigning to improve things here. The thing of the modern magazine is that it's kind of a niche magazine in the way, or it's developing that. I didn't plan to be a niche magazine. If you're interested, say, you work in the field of um, suicide, social worker, academic, that's your kind of very health professional, you will possibly read our magazine. That's and you will. You will have an interest in it, or you've been affected by the issue of suicide. So that's what our magazines are like. We have an audience specifically who will be interested in that topic and subject. And by doing 32 pages concentrated journalism on it, it builds our profile up as well. So since we start doing it um, to where we are now, a number of people actually approach us now to work collaboratively with us to produce a magazine. So it's got that stage now. We have plans for the future, but that's kind of where we are now. So I'll just go to the next slide here, okay? So basically, as I said, we used it as a shop front for the magazine, first of all, but now we're now producing regular stories. And uh, you know, put in the most, as well as put in the most recent edition of the magazine in. Uh, so the the type of stories that we've been put put in most recently was uh, a review of a, a controversial play about identity and loyalist identity, which was on the Mac. Stephen Ray's the star, and it's going on to New York, causing a bit of discussion locally, to put it mildly. And uh, <laughs> um, Robert Redford's son um, was discussed in Derry City Council the other day, who would believe it, but he's produced a really interesting film to help kids overcome trauma in early childhood. And uh, Health and Social Services in Derry were trying to convince the local council that it should be introduced into all the schools. And uh, we thought it was a really nice photograph, a really nice story, so we obviously got a photograph of Robert Redford and his son to go along with 200 words on it. But I think fundamentally what we need to do is test out how we can finance journalism properly. <coughs> what we're doing is tricky. It's different from what we're used to working in the mainstream media. Most other journalists who work in the mainstream media don't have to fund themselves before they can do the journalism. <laughs> but that's exactly the model that we've had to undertake with the, um, the magazine. So we've tested out different ways of financing and, and getting different revenue models. So we've had sponsored pages in the magazine. We do ancillary uh, services like production. We make videos for other people, usually charities. Uh, we do help people communicate their stories, uh, digital and traditional media. And we sometimes do some consultancy for charities when they ask. 
And we've just introduced a new View Champion member scheme. So it's like a membership scheme. People who want to back journalism and are tired of Rupert Murdoch <laughs> can maybe divert some of the resources towards us. And uh, we actually produced a short video, which Bran is the star in. <laughs> and <laughs> if you'd like to show that, Bran, you can link on the book. <laughs> <laughs> The thing as well is that, sorry, I could just bump ahead of there. Um, apologies here, just getting this here. Oh yeah, I think I'll jump ahead. Um, oh yeah, okay. Um, the WordPress is key. I mean, recently, as I say, what I found about WordPress, phenomenal. Just a phenomenal tool and it's free. Okay, you have to, um, you have to pay for web, the, the page to be hosted, etc. But the actual product itself, and I came from a print journalism background. I had never worked really in computer technology. It wasn't my background. Everything was paper and typewriters. I'm not old. And telephones and people smoking in the newsroom. That was the culture in the newsroom. And then they brought in computers. The newsroom kind of fell silent. And the culture kind of changed. At least I'll say one thing about the old days. You never lost a story. But when new technology came in, as they call it, one of the common things in the was, Jesus Christ, what's happened to my story? <laughs> you know, and then it vanished somewhere into the ether. And I think people are going around screaming. You never got that, at least. So for all I came wrong, paper was paper. This is that fact. You know? <laughs> the, paper, the paper was there. But WordPress was, um, was phenomenal. Only once in, what, five years now on WordPress? And it wasn't a WordPress thing per se, and it was probably malware, a plugin. The, the site was hacked, corrupted, whatever. You clicked on the link, and it was kind of funny when I first seen it, and I thought, God, this is a real problem. It took me about nine days to get a sort of with some some more the developers. Basically, you clicked on the link, you went to Japan, where we're advertising helicopters for sale. So, <laughs> <laughs> why not? <laughs> buy a helicopter. But uh, no one can buy a site to buy a helicopter. But anyway, but apart from that, it has been phenomenal. I've got a little bit lazy, and that's what happens because some of the stuff that you use, you see what it does, you post a photograph, you post an image, you post a headline, post video content. There's a lot more to WordPress than that, and plugins. And as we develop, I would actually like to have a web developer actually attached to the organization. Um, freelance, but preferably staff. Someone who knows a lot more about me, about basically how to utilize all of the facilities, not just WordPress, So the reason that you need to support good journalism is probably illustrated in the next slide, where um, the woman on the right exposed what the man on the, the left was doing, or my right, your left. <laughs> but she's my hero, and he's not. <laughs> and he makes all the money. And the Guardian will put an appeal at the end of their page saying, please support us, please support us. And you know, I feel very guilty, but I don't. So it's not a good, effective business model to support journalism. So what we thought about and what we were looking at in terms of research moving forward is how you can actually pay for a fraction of a penny for the articles that you read on the website. And we're very interested to look at the Ethereum platform with the blockchain technology, which obviously is where Bitcoin comes from. And if everyone was to pay a fraction of a penny for an article when they read it, how would that work out? You know, well, obviously this is blue sky thinking because we're a small community media social enterprise. You know, in terms of resources, it's not something that we can very readily decide, oh, let's get the R&D team to have a look at this, you know, because that's us and <laughs> we have to do the journalism. But, you know, what if you could link in the open source of the WordPress with the open source of this Ethereum platform and use this blockchain technology for every one of our readers and like 10,000 people could get a few pennies for us, you know, to, to, to read the content on the website. Because while we can monetize the magazine, well, with the sponsorship, it's a little bit trickier, we find, because everything is free on the internet, to actually, you know, get a good business model around the news on the news site. So we thought that we would look at Civil, which is a new publishing platform launching in America in the spring, and just see what they were up to. So they're going to be using you know, Ethereum tokens, like uh, an offshoot of Bitcoin, and it's going to be the creation of a new media economy. And we're obviously saying, watch that space, because that's 
possibly where it could be going. You know, people could be incentivized once we get over being afraid of cryptocurrency and, you know, the black dark web and, and all the boogeyman sort of idea about it. You know, if we could all pay a little quarter of a penny towards reading a bit of journalism, it might, might make a good business model for us. So this is just a little audio clip of the guy from Sybil called Matt Coldbridge, where he talks a little bit about, you know, what he's trying to do, if anyone would like to listen well, to yeah, that clip. Uh, <laughs> yeah. well, just... Uh, Okay. Well, so basically he's explaining the background to it, but they're setting up little news hubs around the states at the moment, and they're all going to be blockchain technology. So, you know, in, in terms of saving your content, you know, if your website goes down and you just lose all your content, that's not going to happen anymore because it's all going to be saved in, in different computers. And I'm not a techie, so I don't know the ins and outs of it, so I'm just reading up on these things. But we did discover this one... A micropayment platform with a WordPress plugin, which we'd like to look at a little bit more. And basically, they're launching an experiment with digital micropayments to, um, you know, trying to. We're looking at it to sort of validate whether it's something our, our, we could be using, whether it could, you know, get our readers to, to pay a little bit for the journalism that they read on our website without investing significant capital. And there's already been one example of it across the water. Next slide. <laughs> <laughs> so the, this uh, tech news website has just, just said this month that they're going to be using this particular um, um, payment of, of digital currency um, to pay for some of the digital content that they produce on its website. So we think it's very interesting development. I don't know if it's going to go anywhere beyond that, but we think it's a good way to think about the business model around supporting good journalism and whether, you know, these are the sort of monetization schemes that we should be looking at in the future. And I mean, we do need to think about monetization of the media unless you always want to run the risk of having fake news on Facebook potentially overthrowing democratic elections mm. by the Russians. <laughs> um, you know, are these the things that we are going to say is okay in the future, or should we be going back to a media which is actually helping democracy, not hindering democracy? So therefore, monetizing publishing is important in terms of overcoming the, the democratic deficit, not in Northern Ireland, not in the UK, not in the Republic of Ireland, but perhaps worldwide. And that's why we believe that WordPress can save the media because I think it has a vital role potentially in the future to helping us um, monetize journalism properly. And happy birthday, WordPress! <laughs> <laughs>